Hello out there in YouTube land, this is Morris Mann, and as always, I thank you for coming and viewing my channel. Today I'm going to do another special video on vintage drum machines. Back in the day, I collected drum machines. I think I had at one point in time over 50 drum machines. I love creating rhythms, and the advantage with a drum machine versus a drummer, but of course, a drum machine could never replace a drummer, but it's a good stand-in. It's in the middle of the night when you have your inspirations, you can go in and kind of program some rhythms as opposed to pulling out your drum kit and waking up the entire neighborhood. So there were many advantages as far as having a drum machine. And today I'm just gonna kinda of touch on some of the vintage drum machines that I had and kinda of give you my overall, uh, I guess, opinion of them. And the first one I'm gonna start off with is actually my all time favorite. I actually had that particular drum machine for like, I held on to it for about 15 years until someone stole it out of my storage locker. And that machine is the Lisa's HR-16. Also had the HR-16B. And the only difference between the two is they just had different sounds. But what I loved about the Lisa's is the, you can program it. I mean, the, the programming features were just unbelievable. You could do all types of quantizations. Uh, the way that they were structured and measures, uh, it was extremely easy to put together because what you would do was program rhythms and once you program a series of rhythms you can go into the the bank of songwriting mode and you can chain them together and then kind of create your rhythm track and a lot of other drum machines at the time didn't give you that capability and flexibility so my overall I guess number one drum machine is the HR-16 uh, great machine uh, I start off with the Roland's TR-505 it was pretty good for the time being. It was a smaller drum machine. It had some pretty cool digitally stored actual drum sounds in it. And that was good for a little while till I graduated to the leases. Uh, to touch on some other drum machines, I had the Korg DD-1. It was pretty cool because that was the first drum machine that allowed you to actually uh, had a slot on the side of it that you can actually put in additional new drum sounds. Because after a while, you become a little tired of the, the, the handful of drum sounds that you have and you want to expand. And the HR-16B and R505 could, wouldn't allow you to do that. So the Korg DD-1 was kind of like the first that it allowed you to actually bring in additional new sounds. So your drum machine would become obsolete so quickly. And of course, the famous uh, Roland TR-909 and that was good for house music. The majority of the people that did house music back in the 80s, they swore by that drum machine. And it's a collector's item. If you have one in your, in your attic somewhere, it's actually worth about maybe $1,500 right now. And there was another one that was, uh, I guess, kind of like the brother to that one. It was the Roland TR 7, 707. Actually, I'm mistaken, the TR 808. And that was, of course, the rapper's drum machine choice because it had these really bottom types of drum sounds that the kick and the snare and the hi-hats, everybody had to have them back in the day. So that was another uh, very popular drum machine. And again, it's a collector's item too. If you got it somewhere in your closet or in your attic, that particular uh, drum machine is worth somewhere between fifteen dollars and $2,000 because, again, they're collector's items. But as far as the programmability of those versus the new drum machines, there's no comparison. Uh, they were very limited, but at the time, that was the machines of everybody's choice because at that time, they were high-end drum machines. One of my favorite ones, runner-up to Elise's HR-16, is the Roland TR, or actually the Roland R5 and R8. The difference between the two was the R5 was smaller and the R8 was larger. And the R8 allowed you to uh, upload some new sounds as well. It had slots on the side of it. That's the only difference between the two, the, the R5 and R8. The R5 wouldn't allow you to, or didn't allow you to add additional song, I mean sounds. But it was basically the same drum machine with just some extra added features. And the R5, when it was brand new, was about maybe 250 And the R8 was about 750 So... But what I loved about those two machines was they gave you a very crisp 
uh, drum sounds. They were, again, digitally stored drum sounds. And if you were into kind of uh, kind of jazzy stuff or straightforward R&B stuff, those were the machines to buy and use. R. Kelly used the R8 on the first album up until the third album, I believe. And on the second album, he used a combination of the R8 and also uh, the, the Roland 505? Nope, the Roland 808. 808. So it's the R8 and the 808. So uh, let me see. The Kai MP60, of course, legendary. Everybody had to have one. Actually, I had owned about four at some point in time. And I just couldn't really get it to swing like Teddy Riley. So I kind of gave up and sold it. Uh, I thought it was kind of an overpriced drum machine to have if you couldn't really uh, bring out the qualities or should I say the features that made it so famous. And I attempted on many occasions to try to do the quantizing and get that swing, but I just couldn't get it. So I felt it was just too expensive to sit on it. But it is a great piece of machinery. It's also a collector's item too. And uh, it had a lot of advantages because you can download or upload your own sounds. So that was really cool. I mean, I had a probably a library of maybe 400 discs of drum sounds. And anytime I felt like loading in something new or different, I could do that. So that was the advantage of the MP60. And it was just a wonderful machine if you can still grab it and find it on eBay. Um, actually, my very first drum machine, and I really wouldn't call it a drum machine, was the Mattel Sonic Drums. It was a machine that had like four pads, and you hit the pads, and you get these sounds. So it was pretty cool. But getting back to the HR-16, I liked this so much that over a period of time, of course, the drum sounds, then it became dated. But what was so cool is, you know, with uh, the connection of MIDI, you can trigger the HR-16 from another source. If you had like a sampler that had these cool updated drum sounds, you can actually MIDI it into your Alesis HR-16 and do your programming. Because up until Mass got stolen, I was still actually using the HR-16 to trigger these new sounds and I wrote my drum patterns in there. So it was really cool. So uh, that's basically it. I'm just gonna kind of wrap this up as far as you know the drum machines and I'm gonna do a series of, of vintage material should I say equipment because there's some people out there that want to know about how these machines or equipment work because they might want to go out and buy it so I'm kind of trying to give a little review or kind of a little information you know spill before you go out and purchase these things so hopefully this has been helpful and as always again I thank you for viewing my video and coming to my channel thank you